After defeating the trio of danger, Goku flies towards where he and Hit fought Aniraza, with the intention of finding the assassin. But suddenly a bolt of lightning is fired at the Saiyan, who dodges. Soon after the attacker appears, it's Ganos, who is in a very muscular shape. When he sees the Birdman, Goku immediately recognizes him. Goku says, hey, it's you! You're the guy who faced Master Roshi in the first tournament! Ganos is furious and says, I haven't seen that old man here, but I know you're his disciple, so I'll get revenge on him through you. Goku takes a good look at Ganos and realizes that he is much more powerful than when he faced Master Roshi. The Saiyan smiles and says, you got much stronger. You must have trained a lot since the last tournament. Ganos replied, oh yes, I trained a lot so that one day I could teach that old man a lesson. But that's not all. All these intense battles of such powerful people that are happening all over this planet feed my spirit. My power has increased over 300 times since I got here, and it creeps increasing by the minute. Goku is very excited to hear that, and then he says, Perfect! In that case, let's fight and make you even stronger! Goku, still in base form, attacks Ganos. They exchange blows intensely and Goku realizes that Ganos is just as powerful as he is in the base form. Goku praises his opponent. Very good! You really are much stronger than when you faced Master Roshi. But now let's go to the next level. Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan, and then he starts to have a lot of advantage over Ganos, who is impressed by the protagonist's power. Ganos is hit by many of Goku's blows, but none of the blows knocks him out, which prolongs the fight. Before long, Ganos' power starts to increase, and he is no longer hit by so many blows from Goku. Afterwards, he begins to match the power with the protagonist, and sometime later, he starts to have the upper hand. Ganos says to Goku, You idiot, you should have beaten me while you had the upper hand. Now I got even stronger. But Goku smiles and explains, I know that. My intention is that you really get more and more powerful for our fight to become more fun. This surprises Ganos. Did Goku let him evolve on purpose? Seeing that the Super Saiyan would no longer be enough to defeat his opponent, Goku says, Okay, now let's go to the next level. Goku goes Super Saiyan 2, surprising Ganos with his power boost. Hit is in the world of illusions created by Dercori's talismans. He had been trapped in this world created by the warrior from Universe 4 since Goku went after Lavender, Basil, and Bergamo, which has been a few minutes. Hit is completely frozen in his fighting stance, just waiting for something. Dercori's voice which echoes through that illusionary world asks, Won't you move? You'll be an easy target. Hit with a calm expression replies, I don't intend to move for now. Why don't you attack first? According to Hit's thoughts, it was useless to try to look for Dercori, as it was a world of illusions created by her. Reckless moves there could lead to a bad circumstance in the real world. The best he could do is wait for her to attack before finding a gap and counterattacking. Dercori, wondering what Hit is thinking, says, You could stand still, and waiting for me to attack to counterattack is the best thing to do, right? Well, you couldn't be more wrong. The longer you stay in this world, the more your mind will dwell into this illusion and the more your senses will believe that this is part of reality. It's like sleep stages. The more you sleep, the deeper your sleep will be. Here it is, the same thing, only the difference is that it is not a cycle like in sleep. Here you will always fall deeper into an endless abyss. Soon you will lose all sense of reality. After hearing everything the woman said, Hit argues, You may be right, but I'm not the type of person who has a weak mental condition. This means that for me to get to the stage you mentioned, it won't be that fast. Son Goku won't be long in coming back, as those three men won't be enough to defeat him. When he arrives, he's sure to break your illusions, and then you'll have two powerful opponents that you're certainly not going to win. Time is an issue for me, but it is also an issue for you. Let's bet who will fall first. Hearing this, Derkori disagrees. That's not true. It's three against one. They're sure to beat Son Goku. But Hit argues. Nonsense. You may have heard that Son Goku in the first tournament of power equal the power with Jiren, the man capable of defeating even a god of destruction. Do you really think those three idiots are going to beat them? It's only a matter of time before he gets back here. Derkori is convinced by this argument, and so she thinks. Damn, he's right. I have to finish him off and steal his Dragon Ball before that guy comes back. It seems that waiting is no longer an option. Hit is suddenly surrounded by shadow bodies, with Dercori's appearance. Seeing that, Hit says, Are you really going to try to defeat me with such a simple trick? Hit attacks one of the shadows, but he surprisingly misses the attack. 
much to his surprise. After that, the assassin is hit by several blows coming from all directions. After that, he wonders what the hell happened. Darkori laughs and replies, I told you, didn't I? The longer you spend in this world of illusions, the more compromised your mind and senses will become. At this point, your sense of direction are already completely disordered. Right, left, up and down, it's all twisted for you. You haven't noticed, but you completely lost your sense of direction. How do you intend to attack me or defend yourself in this way? After explaining this, Terkori attacks Hit again with her shadows. While getting hit by so many attacks, Hit thinks, with my tact compromised by her illusion, every attack feels real. It's impossible to know what's real and what's not, and with my senses compromised, it's nearly impossible to accurately attack or defend myself. What can I do in this situation? Terkori, while laughing and attacking the assassin, says that it is impossible for him to attack or defend himself. So this fight is already lost, but Hit has an idea. So suddenly, Hit's purple energy goes through her abdomen. Darkori falls to his knees. The shadow disappears and then the world of illusions crumble. So the warrior of Universe 6 returns to the real world. Darkori doesn't understand. What happened? How did Hit know exactly where to strike? How did he find me? The assassin explains that he actually didn't know where she was, as he couldn't attack accurately because he no longer had a sense of direction and didn't know which Darkori was real. He simply froze time in a few fractions of a second and carried out many attacks in all possible directions. So one of those attacks hit her. He couldn't hit her accurately as the target was her chest and not her abdomen. But since she's not that strong, she ended up being incapacitated anyway. Dercori just can't believe what happened. He froze time in fractions of a second and performed so many attacks? This is impossible. Hit says it obviously takes incredible speed to pull off such a feat, but it's something someone like him can do. Dercori is very surprised by this. She never thought he could escape her ability in such a way. He is indeed an extremely intelligent and skilled man. Hit approaches the woman while ordering her to hand over the Dragon Ball, but he suddenly senses something and blocks many unseen attacks. Darkori smiles and greets her companions. Darkori says, Damon, Gamisaras, and Shansa, you took your time. Those are the invisible or tiny warriors from Universe 4 who cannot be seen. Hit impatiently says, Damn it, more scum keep getting in my way. This is getting annoying. After fighting Frieza and Cooler, Kaba was seriously injured from an attack by Cooler. Despite this, he and Vegeta continued their journey towards the center of the planet, also looking for opponents to take the Dragon Balls from them. They are currently flying over the Maritime region. Kaba is very embarrassed and apologizes to Vegeta for causing him trouble. He would like to be stronger, but even though he trains a lot, it seems like he's never strong enough. Vegeta says that defeats are part of the history of a warrior. He himself has unfortunately had many defeats. But the important thing is to not accept the situation and always improve or at least strive to improve. A warrior's greatest defeat is not losing a fight. It's giving up on improving and settling down. After hearing these words from his master, Kaba is more motivated and thanks Vegeta. Suddenly they see a group of enemies approaching and then a trio get in their way. The enemies are Rubrian, Sankaku, and Su Rose, the trio of warriors from Universe 2. Seeing them, Vegeta is very angry and disappointed. He says, Oh, is that you? Those boring women who only talk about love all the time. They get very angry to hear the prince sneer at their love like that and then they attack. Ribrian charges towards Vegeta, while Sankaku and Su Rose charge towards Kaba. Gohan, Piccolo, and Frost are flying over a forest region towards the center of the planet, when suddenly a shot of energy coming from the middle of the forest almost hit Gohan, who narrowly dodged it. At the same moment, Gohan and Piccolo recognize this attack. It is the Universe 2 sniper who was eliminated by Ten Shin Tan in the last tournament. Piccolo says that staying high makes them easy targets. They should come down. The trio descends from the sky into the forest. Gohan tries to sense the sniper's key, but he can't. Piccolo says it was already expected that he would hide his presence. But if we stay between the trees, he won't have a clear view to shoot. And also the shots will hit the trees and they will be slower. Besides that, we will also be able to hear the sounds of the shot approaching and we will dodge more easily. If he wants to have a better chance of hitting us before he's noticed, he'll need to get closer and then we'll have a better chance of catching him. But Frost disagrees with Piccolo's tactic and says, but if we stay among the trees, we won't accurately see his location. We'll also have limited vision. But Gohan agrees with Piccolo and refutes Frost. Gohan says, but he's a sniper. He'll definitely have a good hiding ability and better vision to hit us. The best we can do is really make it difficult for him to fire while you think of a way to find him. Piccolo adds on, that's exactly it, Gohan. 
The more he shoots, the more we'll get a sense of his location, and then we'll follow him. A shot comes, and just as Piccolo predicts the energy came, destroying some branches and tree trunks, which made it easier to dodge them. After this happened, they separated and headed towards the shooting site. It didn't take long for them to see the sniper, Hamira. Gohan was the first to approach Hamira, but when he was about to attack the Green Warrior, he was surprised by Yadora to Jimizu, teleporting in front of him and knocking him away. Then Jimizu touched Hamira and used the teleport to get him out of there, surprising the three who didn't expect him to have a companion. Then another shot came from somewhere else. They dodged it and headed towards Hamira, but he was again teleported elsewhere, leaving the trio very frustrated. Frost, in a tone of irony to provoke Piccolo, asks, So, Mr. Strategist, what's plan B? Brawly, Kale, and Cauliflower were flying over a mountainous desert. They already had the required amount of Dragon Balls to pass the next stage, so they were heading towards the center of the planet. But they are surprised when suddenly an energy field is formed around them. Who created this barrier is Cocote, a member of the Pride Troopers. After doing so, she yells, Now, General, this is your chance. General Casserole comes out of a rock where he was hiding and concentrating all his power, fires a great wave of energy at Cocote's force field. Before the attack hits the barrier, Cocote makes an opening, and then the energy enters the dome and explodes inside it, creating a concentration super explosion. After this attack, Cocote undoes the force field and goes to Casserole's side. She says, It was a very powerful attack, General. Did they not die? Casserole replies, Well, I don't know about that, man, but we saw the absurd power of those two girls in the first tournament. Containing the attack against them is not a good idea, but that was probably enough to make it impossible for them to fight for the time being. But when the smoke from the attack clears, they are surprised to see that Brawly, with his body, protected Kale and Cauliflower with a hug. Universe 7 Saiyan took all the damage, which surprised even the two girls. Cauliflower, very angry, asks why Brawly defended them. They are not weak and could withstand that attack. But Brawly replies it was simply a natural instinct. Kale, very worried, offers to take care of the Saiyan. But he says it's not necessary. The attack didn't cause too many injuries. Seeing that, Kasserol and Kokote are shocked. That was the most powerful attack by one of the most powerful warriors in Universe 11, and all the power of the attack was contained in that energy dome, which increased the damage much more. But still the Saiyan received the attack without transforming and took almost no damage. Cauliflower, very angry, says that she will make them pay for attacking in that cowardly way. But Brawly says no, he will defeat these opponents. Cauliflower is a little disappointed that she can't fight, but she agrees after all. Brawly took the most damage from the attack, so he has the right to want to fight them. Casserole and Cocode prepare for the fight. They are members of the Great Pride Troopers. They will not be afraid. Besides, Jiren will get there soon, and when he does, they'll all be defeated. Hearing Jiren's name, Kale and Cauliflower are scared, but Brawly doesn't care. He just wants to defeat those opponents who try to hurt his new friends and so he flies towards the two opponents. In another region of the planet, Goku and Ganos exchange blows intensely. The Saiyan is already using Super Saiyan 3, and even then Ganos has the upper hand against him. Ganos' body is very muscular, and the bird warrior is surrounded by lightning, emanating a lot of power. In a moment, as they exchange blows, Ganos releases an electrical aura from his body that electrocutes Goku and knocks him away. After that, Ganos launches a powerful wave of energy from his hand. Goku counterattacks with the Kamehameha, but the Saiyan's energy is easily overcome by the energy of the Universe 7 warrior. And Goku needs to dodge to avoid being hit, but Ganos, already assuming that Goku would dodge, shoots from his mouth a wave of energy that hits the Saiyan and makes Goku fall from the sky into the forest. The protagonist destroys many, many trees during a very violent fall. Ganos creates in his hand a giant energy globe and launches it against the forest region. The destruction created by that energy is such that the forest is completely disappeared, turning the place into a lifeless land. Ganos smiles and assumes he defeated Goku with that attack, but the Saiyan appears before him with the instant transmission, indicating that he has escaped the last attack. Goku has a disapproving expression on his face. He says to Ganos, Hey, take it easy! If any other not-so-strong participant had been in that region, they would have been killed by their attack. But Ganos says he doesn't care. All he wants to do is keep fighting and get more and more powerful. If he keeps increasing his power level, he will become the strongest warrior in all the universes. Hearing this answer, Goku gets more serious. Ganos was getting stronger and out of control. Master Roshi was right to be worried about him during the first tournament of power. The fighting spirit that increases his power also makes him more aggressive and ecstatic with power. It's time to end the fight before Ganos wreaks havoc on the planet. 
Goku closes his eyes, and when he opens his eyes, he's already transformed into a Super Saiyan God. Seeing Goku's new transformation, Ganos is confused. Before he felt a lot of energy coming from the Saiyan, but now he doesn't feel anything. Goku with a serious and calm expression tells Ganos that he's really amazing. A few minutes before, he was just a little above his level in base form, but now he's already surpassed his level in Super Saiyan 3. He was so excited about the fight that he even used Super Saiyan Phase 3, something that he logically shouldn't do. In other words, fighting Ganos has been a lot of fun for Goku. And if he knew how to fight by ensuring the safety of the other participants, they could continue this fight. But unfortunately, his ego increases along with his power level. Because of that, he must finish this fight before anyone gets hurt. Ganos gets very angry with those words. The way Goku speaks, it sounds like he's much superior. He doesn't like to listen to sermons. Ganos prepares another energy globe, this time much larger than the attack that destroyed the forest. After doing so, he launches at Goku, but the protagonist keeps his expression calm. And then with one hand, he holds the attack and launches it upwards off the planet. Ganos is absolutely shocked by that. How did he hold back such a powerful attack with one hand? Has Goku's power increased so much as a single transformation? But before the bird man could assimilate the whole situation, Goku appears in front of him. And before Ganos could react, the Saiyan hits his forehead with a flick, launching him away. Ganos falls unconscious on the same ground he destroyed earlier. After defeating his opponent, Goku reverts to base form and wonders, why did he use that move? Is he inheriting Mr. Beerus' behavior without realizing it? Thinking about it gave the protagonist shivers. In the desert, Brawly faced off against General Casserole and Cocote while Kale and Cauliflower watched. Brawly flies towards Casserole and Cocote, but just as he was going to punch them, Cocote defends them both by creating a force field around them. But as soon as Brawly hits the force field and his blow is stopped, Cocote undoes energy and Casserole attacks the Saiyan right in front of them with a wave of energy. Brawly is thrown far away with that attack, but manages to recover in midair without hitting his body with anything. This has been going on since the fight started. Brawly tries to attack, but Cocote defends them, and Casserole counters. He's not badly injured even after taking a lot of attacks from the Universe 11 Warrior, but it's frustrating not being able to attack. Polyfly yells for Brawly to increase his power or transform. If he does, he will surely and easily destroy Cocote's barrier and defeat them both with a single attack. But Brawly doesn't want to do that. If he increases his powers anymore, he could lose control and hurt someone. Casserole takes advantage of Brawly's distraction by talking to Cauliflower and approaches the Saiyan by launching a ball of energy at him that hits Brawly's face and temporarily blinds him. After that, Casserole creates an energy blade in one of his hands and attacks the opponent with a slash, cutting the Saiyan's chest. After being wounded by Casserole, Brawly walks away, then regains his sight. Casserole couldn't believe it. He hit the Saiyan directly with the energy blade, but all he got was a shallow cut. What is that man's skin made of? Brawly gets really mad and he's tired of those tricks. The Saiyan flies towards Casserole very furious. Kakote, even from a distance, creates a force field around the general. But Brawly now uses more strength and just one punch from him is enough to crack Kakote's defense. And the Saiyan's second punch blows a hole in the shield and reaches Casserole's neck. Looking into Brawly's eyes, Casserole sees he's out of his mind. Kakote flies towards them to try to help Casserole, but Brawly throws the man at the woman. They both collide in the air and fall to the ground. After doing so, Brawly flies towards them to deliver the final attack. Casserole, scared, orders Kakote to use the shield, but the woman says that at that speed, Brawly is coming, the shield won't work. He'll break the shield and kill them both. The two warriors close their eyes. Their end has come. After that, a big impact wave can be seen in the desert, a very powerful attack hits something. But Casserole and Kokot are still alive. What happened? When they open their eyes, they see in front of them Dispo, who has carried them somewhere else at such a high speed and they didn't even realize they were moved. After that, they see Topo land in front of them. The Pride Trooper leader congratulates Dispo by the speed of the rescue and apologizes to Casserole and Kokote for the delay. After that, the two look at where they were. Jiren was holding Brawly's hand. He was the one who stopped the Saiyan's blow. Seeing that, Jiren has stopped his attack. Brawly is surprised and seems to regain consciousness. Jiren looks at the Saiyan, 
says that was a good blow. He's very strong. Universe Eleven's warrior lands an attack on Brawly, knocking him away. Kale and Cauliflower go to Brawly's side. Cauliflower says that this man called Jiren is very powerful. If they face him, they will be defeated and lose the orbs they got. They must back off for now. But Brawly doesn't want to. There's something about Jiren that he can't explain, but he feels an uncontrollable urge to fight him. Something inside Brawly says he must face that warrior that stands before him. Jiren says he sees in Brawly a great fighting spirit. The spirit that is inside him and the spirit that is inside Brawly are attracting each other. They need to face each other to know who is the most powerful. Jiren orders Topo and Dispo not to interfere in the fight and advises Kale and Cauliflower to do the same. That is a battle that shouldn't be stopped. Brawly not containing his spirit launches himself into a fight towards Jiren and the impact of his flight was so great that Kale and Cauliflower who were next to him fell to their seats. Jiren also flies towards the Saiyan and then the two clash their fists creating a gigantic impact wave that destroys even some nearby rocks. After that, several waves of impact can be seen all over the place. The two warriors move throughout their desert region, exchanging countless blows. Kale and Cauliflower, while seeing that, are absolutely amazed, as are the Pride Troopers. The impact of those two blows was so great that it made their entire body shake. It doesn't take long for the most powerful member of the Pride Trooper to gain the upper hand in the fight. Jiren lands many attacks on Brawly, punishing the Saiyan with very strong blows. Universe Eleven's warrior says that Brawly is powerful, but his technique is not refined, and he also doesn't have precise control of his own energy. Apparently, he hasn't fought many high-level fights, but he was different. He had spent his entire life fighting countless battles, and with much training and experience, he had refined his skills and control of his energy. But to Jiren's surprise, it doesn't take long for Brawly to adapt to his fighting style, managing to defend and dodge the Universe Eleven's warrior's attacks. Brawly says he's participated in some training with Goku and Vegeta, so yes, he fought high-level battles a few times. Jiren, upon hearing that, says, I see. It sounds like you're the type of person who was born with a natural gift for fighting. You haven't fought many times, but you seem to have a great ability to adapt to your opponent and learn as you fight. The ability combined with the training you've had with those two makes you able to even maintain a battle with someone like me. You are a very impressive warrior, but that's not all my power. And I know it's not all your power either. The time has come to show me the limit of your strength. Jiren starts using more power in the fight, and now his punches have a lot more impact and make Brawly retreat. The Universe 11 warrior's speed has also increased and Brawly is again hit by many attacks. As he hits Brawly, Jiren says that he knows he has a lot more power to show. He must do it now or he will be defeated. But Brawly doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to lose control. But Jiren keeps leveling up. He hits Brawly more and more. The Pride Trooper man blows get heavier and cause more pain to the Saiyan who suffers a lot with every damage received. While watching that, Kale and Cauliflower are very angry. They think about helping, but Dispo and Topo go in front of them. They won't let them interrupt Jiren's fight. Topo says they're not just doing this for Jiren's sake, but for their safety as well. When Jiren is struggling with his spirit burning like that, it's not good for weaker people to get in his way. At one point, Jiren lands a blow that sends Brawly away. And then while yelling at Brawly to unleash his true power, Jiren launches a powerful energy attack at the Saiyan. Brawly without time to dodge the attack, holds it with his hands, but that energy is too powerful. He won't be able to hold it. Jiren says that he must release more power now, or else he will be swallowed up by that energy. Brawly, with no option, starts to unleash a large amount of power. His hair grows in height, and his eyes turn yellow. And as the Saiyan's hands held Jiren's energy, he fired a great wave of power from his mouth, and the attack was so powerful that it immediately made Jiren's energy return to himself. But the Universe 11 warrior redirected his energy and Brawly upwards. Seeing Brawly's new form, he's happy. The Saiyan has finally increased his power. But he knows that Brawly is still not using his full potential. Brawly is not out of control, but he feels a great rage trying to take over his heart. That's dangerous. He should go back to base form. But Jiren doesn't let him do that and attacks him. Brawly has no choice. He reacts to the opponent's attacks while using that power. 
Jiren, while exchanging blows with the Universe 7 warrior, reveals in his thoughts to feel a heat in his fists. He only felt it once in his fight against Son Goku in the Tournament of Power. Brawly starts leveling up even more and makes Jiren back off. Kale, Caulifla, Topo, and Dispo watch that fight in complete amazement. They couldn't believe that Brawly was so incredibly powerful. But Jiren also increased his power, and again they trade blows at the same level. Many lightning strikes begin to fall from the sky, and the impact waves from their blows create whirlpools and tornadoes across the region. Little by little, the climate of the entire planet was changing. Vegeta and Kaba fight the trio of warriors from Universe 2. Vegeta fights Ribrian in Super Saiyan, while Kaba fights Sankaku and Su Rose in Super Saiyan 2. He has a lot of difficulty in the fight since he was injured. He is hit by many attacks from the women who fight very well in pairs. Vegeta lands a blow on Ribrian that knocks her away and then tells Kaba that he must react. Fighting like that, he is putting the warrior race to shame. Ribrian returns towards Vegeta with her body curled up like a steamroller. The Saiyan dodges. She passes by him but then turns around and goes towards him again in high speed. While fending off the women's attack with his hands, Vegeta says that he doesn't have time to help Kaba. He must find the Saiyan spirit inside him to win this battle. As he is cornered by the two women, Kaba asks Vegeta what he means by that. What is the Saiyan spirit? And the prince explains, This is the spirit that every Saiyan warrior should have. The thirst for battle and more power, and the ability to overcome one's limitations in battle, to become more and more powerful. Each blow received and each wound is a learning experience, a fuel to become stronger and stronger. After hearing his master's words, Kaba is extremely motivated. Vegeta is right. A Saiyan warrior must learn from hardship. He must use this moment of despair to overcome his limits and become even more powerful. Filled with determination, Kaba breaks out of his defensive posture and starts the offensive against the two women, who are impressed by his sudden change in behavior. The Saiyan presses the two, making them retreat and lands a few blows on them. Women are very angry. The raw power of a Saiyan cannot overcome the power of love. Love is above all. They stand side by side and fire an attack with all their power at Kaba. The Saiyan also concentrates all his power and launches an attack in response. The two energy waves clash but Kaba is losing. Overwhelmed by the desire for victory and power, Kaba screams as his power grows more and more and then his energy completely overwhelms the energy of the warriors from Universe 2 and they are swept away. Ribrian seeing her friends losing is furious. How could love have been defeated? But Vegeta replies. If she really knew what love is, she would have become more powerful to protect what she loves so much. After saying that, the Prince of Saiyan lands a powerful punch on Ribrian. A punch so strong that the whole sea below them splits open. And then after receiving this attack, the warrior from Universe 2 is also thrown away. After seeing that they won, Kaba smiles and then he goes back to base form and passes out. The young Saiyan falls towards the sea, but before he reaches the water, Vegeta catches him by the arm. With a proud smile on his face, the Prince of Saiyan tells his unconscious disciple that he did a good job. But Vegeta realizes something. The climate in the region is changing. The sea is getting rough, and lots of lightning dominates the skies. He feels an incredible power taking over the planet. No. Two powers. Brawly and Jiren. Worried, Vegeta wonders where this is going to end. The combat between the two super powerful warriors continues. While fighting against Jiren, the Saiyan releases a large amount of power. His expression is one of fear and despair. While fighting, he tries to control his own power, but his energy simply escapes his body without permission. Seeing what is happening to his opponent, Jiren tells him that while he fears his own power, he will never be able to control it. He must accept his own power. But for Brawly, those words have no meaning. He doesn't know what the most experienced warrior means. He just feels scared. Jiren lands attacks on Brawly. He says that the Saiyan's preoccupation with his own power makes him lose attention in the fight. If Brawly keeps fighting like this, he will be defeated. Brawly is even more scared and less and less able to defend, dodge, and counterattack. With that, Jiren gains more and more advantage in battle and punishes the Universe 7 warrior with heavy blows. Brawly suffers from every blow, his bones crack and his muscles seem to crumble on impact. Jiren says that he knows Brawly can be better, 
He feels that who stands before him is the warrior who, like Son Goku, can push him to the limit and make him become wiser and more powerful. But for that, Brawly must use his full potential. The Universe 7 Saiyan, tired of receiving so many blows and suffering so much pain, screams so loud that it makes the whole region shake, and he starts releasing a gigantic aura of energy that makes even Jiren back away. Now Brawly has transformed into Super Saiyan, and the pupils of his eyes have disappeared. Seeing the opponent's face, Jiren realizes that he is no longer in control. From that moment on, he will need to be very careful. Not only with himself, but with everything around him. Brawly advances towards Jiren who is unafraid and also towards the maddened enemy. The two clash fists and then something strange happens. They are no longer in the desert, but on a mountain. Topo, Dispo, Kale and Cauliflower wonder where they went. They shocked their fists on one moment and the next they weren't there anymore. Topo, wondering what happened, says that probably the power of their attacks caused a space-time distortion. They must have gone to another region of the planet. He can still feel their energy. Brawly and Jiren exchanged extremely powerful blows, and now the Saiyan attack the Warrior of Pride without any hesitation. Jiren lands an attack on the Saiyan, but he simply ignores the damage, and without retreating an inch, counters Jiren with an even stronger blow, destabilizing the Ball Man's guard, who receives a string of attacks afterwards. Jiren immediately raises his key, and again the fight is in balance. He praises the Saiyan, saying, That's right, finally you are fighting without hesitation. You have finally accepted your own power. See how that makes you so much stronger? But something is still missing. Jiren begins to dodge and defend Brawly's attacks, and counterattacks the Saiyan many times. Brawly has a hard time attacking or defending his opponent, which makes him very frustrated and even angrier. While striking the Saiyan, Jiren explains, In addition to accepting his power, a warrior also needs to own his power. Your power is great and your gentle heart makes you afraid to use it, so you deny your own strength. But when you need more power, you end up being overpowered by it, because your mind unconsciously rejects it. And as long as your mind rejects power, both cannot work together. You need to accept your power. Brawly can't understand Jiren's words. He gets even more frustrated and furious at not being able to hit the opponent, and then starts unleashing even more power. Seeing this, Jiren realizes that this process is not going to be easy. While all this was happening in another region of the planet, Piccolo, Gohan and Frost were in a bad situation while facing Jimizu and Hamira. The sniper Hamira would hide in the trees in the forest and shoot at them, but finding him was not the main problem. It was the fact that every time they got close to attack the sniper, the Yadra Jimizu teleported him to another place. That way it was almost impossible to catch them, which made the fight an eternal game of cat and mouse. At one point, Hamira shoots at Piccolo who dodges the shot. Gohan, coming from the other direction, fires an energy attack at the Green Warrior, and Frost, coming from the other direction, also fires an energy attack at him. But Jimizu immediately reaches him with the instant transmission and takes him away, letting Gohan and Frost attack hit each other and create a huge explosion at that location. Piccolo, very angry, crosses his arms and started to build up energy, and then he yells at Gohan and Frost to get away. After that, he opened his arms, releasing all the accumulated energy, and then a great wave of energy devastated all the forest, destroying all the trees and making that place just an empty land. Gohan asks Piccolo why he does that. Wasn't the plan to use the trees in the forest to hinder the sniper? Standing in an open field would make them more vulnerable to an attack. Piccolo says that the situation has changed. It's impossible for them to catch up to Hamira and Jimizu like that. Hamira and Jimizu appear in the sky, clearly. Jimizu has teleported to escape along with Hamira from Piccolo's latest attack. They smile, and Hamira says that now they were on open ground, it would be much easier for him to hit them. And on the other hand, it wouldn't be any harder for him and Jimizu to keep evading enemy attacks. This means that Piccolo's decision only made the situation worse for them. Piccolo responds to this provocation by shooting a key ball at Hamira, who deflects it, and then the Namekian smiles and says that the way it was before, they couldn't counter Hamira's shots from a distance as he was hiding among the trees, but now they have an open view that's possible. That is, if they cannot defeat the sniper by approaching him, then they would do so from a distance. Frost smiles, he liked that idea. A shooting contest wasn't too bad. It could be fun. Gohan, Frost, and Piccolo all fire energy attacks at Hamira at the same time. The sniper warrior dodges the attacks with an annoying expression. Hamira tells them, Who do you think I am? I'm a professional, attacking with shots and firing from a distance in my specialty. 
Do you dare think that you can win just because there are three? I'll show you who you're dealing with. Hamira shoots at the three Team 4 warriors who dodge and fire back. This battle is now a firefight. Suddenly, the climate of the region changed. A big storm started. Gohan gets very worried and tells Piccolo that it was Brawly's key. It was too high and out of control. Piccolo says that Gohan should focus on that fight. They can think about what to do with Brawly later. Brawly and Jiren were now fighting in a frozen region of the planet. The impacts of the two warriors' blows destroys the glacier around them. The legendary Super Saiyan fought madly, while the Universe 11 warrior remained calm. Even though the two were using the same level of power at the moment, Jiren landed blows on Brawly while the Saiyan couldn't hit him. He explains to Brawly that fighting that way, he can subdue warriors who are weaker than him. But if he fights someone of the same level, he will have many weaknesses compared to the opponent. As this uncontrolled fighting style leaves him with many breaches for attacks, Brawly, angry at receiving so many attacks, begins to emanate even more energy, and several balls of energy begin to be fired by the Saiyan's key aura and hit all over that place. Jiren defends himself from these attacks by creating a force field around him. Hit had just defeated Universe Force warriors Daemon, Shansa, and Gamisaras. They weren't very strong warriors, but because they were almost unattainable, they were hard to see. It was a boring fight. Derkori, who had been defeated by a hit before the three companions arrived, scolds the three unseen warriors. How could the three have been defeated? They are so idiots! Suddenly a shower of key balls fall from the sky, and both Hit and Derkori need to dodge to avoid being hit. Hit sensing Brawly's key notices that he is increasingly out of control, and wonders how far Jiren intends to take this fight. Derkori, feeling the energy of that uncontrolled and very powerful warrior, smiles. She seems to have a plan. The woman tells Hit that she already knows a way to defeat him and his entire team. Their defeat is already assured. After saying that, Derkori disappears, and Hit is a little worried by that insinuation. How will she defeat the entire Team 4, which is made up of such powerful warriors? He must watch out. Brawly creates a gigantic globe of energy and launches it towards Jiren, who, seeing the attack, would hit the planet and could cause destruction that could spread over a large territory, decides to hold the attack instead of dodging. Jiren needed to use more power to not be carried away by Brawly's energy, and so the Universe 11 warrior once again raised his power and launched the attack skyward. But Brawly was already very close to him and lands a string of blows on the Pride Troop warrior. He finishes the string of attacks by shooting a wave of energy through his mouth that completely engulfs Jiren's body. Jiren is carried from the frozen region of the planet into a vast desert, where he finally crashes into the ground. He was really hurt by that attack. When he gets up, Jiren sees that Brawly is already there, the legendary Super Saiyan watching him from the sky with an expression of pure fury and madness. Jiren smiles. Brawly is really incredibly strong, but that fight shouldn't go on or else the situation could become unmanageable. Jiren starts to increase his power even more, releasing an unbelievable amount of ki, and as the Universe 11 warrior does so, he says that in the next move, this combat will end. But Brawly sensing Jiren's power increase also increases his own power. And even though the Saiyan doesn't use words to express his thoughts, Jiren realizes that he too plans to end the fight in his next attack. The time to know who is the most powerful has arrived. As Brawly and Jiren raise their powers for a final blow, Frieza and Cooler watch from a distance. Cooler, a little annoyed, complains, Damn, following these two around this huge planet is so boring. But Frieza, with an evil smile on his face, justifies, Be patient, my brother. The moment is coming. Brawly and Jiren are true monsters. A direct fight against them is something very dangerous. But if we can surprise them in a moment of weakness, we can finish them off. They will end this fight after their next shock, Someone will be the loser, and it will be that person that we will eliminate. Or if we are lucky, both of them could end this fight where he wounded, and we'll kill them both. After saying that, Frieza makes his evil laugh. His eyes are bloodthirsty. Goku arrives with the instant transmission in that desert. He arrives in a place a little far from the two warriors. Without a worried expression, the protagonist observes both of them emanating an absurd amount of energy. He realizes that if they attack, with that amount of power, someone could get out of this fight dead. He has to do something. Brawly and Jiren are accumulating a lot of energy, enough to cause a major climatic collapse in the environment around them. Jiren, who is on the floor, has a serious and controlled expression. Brawly, unlike him, 
is on the sky and the legendary Super Saiyan is absolutely maddened by his own power. Frieza and Cooler are hidden, watching them from a distance, waiting for the moment when one of the warriors falls to deliver a deadly attack. Goku, who has just arrived at the location, observes that the two are about to do and considers intervening, but that's too late. Jiren and Brawly at the same time release powerful waves of energy. The attack of both warriors violently collide, creating an impact wave that makes the entire planet vibrate. At first, Jiren seems to have the upper hand, but Brawly, even more crazed, increases his power even more and starts to have the upper hand against Universe 11's warrior, who has to push himself even harder, unleashing even more power and making their attacks stay in motion. Balance again. Goku tries to get closer, but the power of those attacks is so great that the Saiyan can't fly closer to them. Goku using telepathy speaks to Jiren's mind, who is surprised by the call of another Saiyan from Universe 7. Speaking in Jiren's mind, Goku says that Brawly is like a battle machine. The angrier he gets, the stronger he will be. Brawly will reach a level that Jiren can no longer handle and will put everyone on that planet in danger. Jiren should end this fight now. Jiren also communicates with Goku by telepathy and says that Goku is not entirely right. If he pays close attention, he will see that Brawly, despite being angry and despite increasing his power, has a confused energy. If his energy is confused instead of being totally dominated by anger, it means that despite using all that amount of power, he is still holding a spark of awareness deep in his heart. But Jiren says he understands Goku's point. It really might not be a good idea to push Brawly even further. Brawly increases his power even more and then he again defeats Jiren's energy. And to everyone's surprise, Jiren's energy is completely swallowed up by the Saiyan's energy and Universe 11's warrior is hit by the energy wave and disappears in the middle of that attack. Brawly's attack explodes into the ground and enters the ground and off the planet in the distance. Brawly's energy can be seen crossing the other side. Brawly's attack literally ripped through the entire ground of that gigantic super tough planet. But when we see Brawly again, we see that his energy is completely dissipated and Jiren has his hand on the Saiyan's abdomen. He clearly landed a very powerful punch on Brawly. Universe 7's warrior loses his Super Saiyan aura, reverting to base form, and then he spits out a large amount of blood. Jiren says, You are confused, aren't you? You must be wondering how I did this. It's simple, because you didn't have a good control of your power. That energy attack of yours, despite having a huge and unbelievable amount of energy, had no precision. Because of that, the moment I was hit by your attack, I just focused my energy on a single point to defend myself. And using my energy on that single point, I was able to advance through your attack and attack you where you least expected it. You are powerful, but the fact that your release energy so wildly means that an attack that is very powerful and well-focused can beat you, as you are unable to control your energy to create a good concentrated defense. In short, your lack of control over your own power was your defeat. After Jiren says these things, Brawly passes out, and then the Universe 7 Saiyan falls from the sky towards the ground. Frieza and Cooler were watching this. Frieza says, Now Cooler, he's completely unprotected. Let's kill him. They fire energy laser towards Brawly. The attack would be deadly, but Jiren gets in front of the Saiyan, and even receiving their attacks head on. The Universe 11 warrior is not hurt. That act surprises Frieza and Cooler. Jiren says, It's been a while since I've noticed you guys hiding. So this was your plan? You should be ashamed of such a low and mediocre strategy. Frieza and Cooler are irritated by those words. Goku goes to Jiren's side and sees what Frieza was up to. He gets very angry. The protagonist says, Hey Frieza, since you want to fight, why don't you fight me? At that moment, Frieza and Cooler notice that Topo, Dispo, Kale, Caulifla, Casserole, and Kokode are also flying towards them. Frieza says, Cooler, there's no chance of victory here. Let's retreat. Cooler doesn't like that idea. He feels like a coward, but in fact, there was no chance for them. So they both back off. Topo, Dispo, Kale, Caulifla, Kokode, and Casserole arrive. Kale seeing Brawly on the ground immediately rushes over to see him. She's very worried. Goku takes the Dragon Ball from Brawly and gives it to Jiren. He says he deserves it. After all, he won the fight. Jiren takes the orb but says he must make sure Brawly moves on to the next step. He feels that Brawly can become even more powerful if he controls his power, and he really wants to fight the Saiyan to his fullest potential. This fight was just an omen. Goku says he will do his best to get Brawly to qualify, and he also thanks Jiren. 
It seems that this fight was very important for his friend. Caulifla says that they were talking too much. They are enemy teams. Shouldn't they be fighting right now? Goku says it would be better if they could face each other in the next stages of the tournament. Maybe then they can fight without having to worry about other opponents getting in the way. Everyone else agrees and decides that they won't fight at that moment, but in the next phase. After making this deal, the Universe 11 Warriors leave. Kale, who was examining Brawly, says he doesn't appear to be seriously injured, but he also doesn't look like he's going to wake up right now. Caulifla asks what they should do now. Goku says it's best from now on he stays with them and Brawly to make sure the situation doesn't get out of control again. They must go together to the center of the planet and look for enemies to defeat them and take their orbs. In another region of the planet, a real shooting battle was taking place. Piccolo, Gohan, and Frost fired many waves and energy balls at Hamira, the best sniper in Universe 2, while the sniper did the same against them. Hamira dodged the shots either with his own skill or with the help of Jimizu, the Yadrat from the same universe who helped him to escape that attack using the instant transmission. In this way, Hamira became almost unattainable for Gohan, Piccolo, and Frost, who needed to dodge the Universe 2 warrior shots using only their own skill. In one moment, Gohan fires an energy attack at Hamira. The sniper counters Gohan's attack with one shot. The two energy shots collide and create an explosion. When this explosion happens, Gohan can no longer see the opponent because of the smoke. But that was already part of Hamira's plan, and so Gohan is surprised when Hamira appears behind him along with Jimizu with an instant transmission. When he arrives behind Gohan, Hamira already has a shot ready and launches his attack against Gohan who is surprised by the instant movement of the opponents and dodges by very little, earning a deep wound in one of his arms. Frost trying to hit the two opponents from behind immediately creates a globe of energy and launches it at them, but Jimizu notices the attack and uses the instant transmission to both escape in this way. Frost's attack goes towards Gohan who needs to escape immediately and is narrowly wounded by the allies' attack. Gohan yells at Frost that he needs to be more careful to attack. He's not fighting alone. But the Universe 6's warrior says it's not his fault that Gohan is an idiot. Taking advantage of Frost's distraction, Jimizu teleports along with Hamira to his back. And then Hamira makes a shot that would hit Frost. But Piccolo reaches out his arm and grabs Frost by the arm and pulls him out of the direction of the attack. Thanks to that, Frost is not hurt. Piccolo tries to counterattack Jimizu and Hamira by launching an energy attack with his other hand at them. But again, Jimizu teleports and the Universe 2 warriors evade the attack. Piccolo, Gohan, and Frost reunite again. Piccolo scolds the two companions, saying that if they argue with each other, they will be defeated. Frost says that catching these two is impossible, especially if he has to worry about hitting his allies when attacking. Piccolo says that Hamira and Jimizu do this on purpose, making enemies hurt themselves in part of their strategy. Gohan tells Piccolo that they need to transform. Using more power is the only way to reach these two. But Piccolo does not agree with this idea. Jimizu can move instantly with the instant transmission, even if they transform to increase speed. It won't be that easy, meaning they'll need to waste a fair amount of energy to catch them. This tournament is apparently going to be much longer than the first one, and they don't know how many stages of the competition there will be and what kind of challenges await them. They just know that some gods of destruction might be enemies. In this first stage, they need to save as much energy as possible so as not to be easy targets in the next stages. Gohan agrees with his master that they need to save energy. But what are they going to do? They cannot reach the enemies. Piccolo says he has an idea, but for that, they will need to work as a team. Hamira from a distance sees that Gohan, Piccolo, and Frost are whispering something and while saying not to allow them to keep talking, the Universe 2 warrior fires several energy attacks at them. In order to dodge, the three warriors of Team 4 need to split up. And as they do so, Piccolo yells for Gohan and Frost to remember what he said. After saying this to the three companions, the Namekian raises both hands and then he uses his mental power to raise a cloud of dust that hides him. Seeing this from the sky, Hamira says that this is useless, and then he shoots several times at the dust cloud, forcing Piccolo to fly away. And while shooting at the Namekian, the sniper says that none of them will be able to hide from him. In a moment, Hamira manages to land a shot at Piccolo, but when the Namekian's body is hit by the attack, he disappears. It was just a clone. 
At that moment, the real Piccolo, who had actually been hiding underground in that region at the time he hid in the dust, appears from under the ground and shoots a wave of energy from his mouth. The attack comes from below and behind Universe 2's warriors, and by the time they realize the attack, it's already too late. Jimizu is hit by Piccolo's energy and is knocked down by it. After hitting Jimizu, Piccolo yells at Gohan and Frost that it's now their turn. Gohan tells Frost that they can't let Hamira move freely and asks the Universe 6 warrior to surround the area. Even though he doesn't like the idea of obeying Gohan's instruction, Frost does as he says and then creates several energy lasers with his fingers surrounding that entire area around Hamira, just like Frieza did to surround Dispo during the first tournament of power. After Hamira is surrounded by Frost's lasers, Gohan flies towards him and attacks the Green Warrior. Hamira tries to react against Universe 7's Earthling Saiyan, but he is at a total disadvantage. Hamira tries to retreat, but he touches one of Frost's lasers and is wounded in the back. Gohan smiles and says, You're actually much better than all of us at ranged attacks, but in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're not even close. Fighting you like that is even boring. Hamira gets very angry and charges at Gohan trying to land some attacks on him, but it's useless. The Earthling is totally superior and manages to dodge and block Hamira's attacks very easily. And then in one moment, Gohan counters with a stronger attack, and so he knocks out Hamira. After Hamira and Jimizu defeat Gohan, Piccolo and Frost get together again. Piccolo says they all did a good job as a team. Gohan says it wasn't that bad fighting alongside Frost, but the Universe 6 warrior says he only did it because it was necessary. It's good they don't think that they're friends just because of that. Gohan and Piccolo laugh at their teammates' bad mood, and then they continue their journey towards the center of the planet. Goku, Kale, Cauliflower, and Brawly are flying over an archipelago. Brawly is still passed out. He's being carried by Goku. Cauliflower impatiently asks Goku what he intends to do. He gave Brawly's orb to Jiren. They should look for another one for him. Goku says it's not fair for them to defeat an enemy and give Brawly the Dragon Ball. He must do it himself. Cauliflower hates this idea. How is Brawly going to get a Dragon Ball if he's passed out? Jiren hit him really hard. It's possible he won't wake up that fast and maybe he won't wake up until this phase of the competition is over. Will they let Brawly be disqualified? Goku is thoughtful about that. She was right. It's not cool to let Brawly be disqualified. But on the other hand, it also doesn't seem fair for him to be classified without getting the orb on his own. It's a complicated situation. While the members of Team 4 are flying over that archipelago, on one of the islands, Derkori is hiding. She watches them pass through the sky. The Universe 4 warrior has been looking for them for a long time. She looks at Brawly being carried by Goku and then she smiles and thinks, there he is. Ever since I felt his monstrous uncontrolled power during that fight, I've been looking for him. This man will be the key to my victory. Derkori has a talisman in her hands, and she's looking at this talisman. She thinks, With this special talisman, I will manipulate all the anger in his heart. So he will become an uncontrolled monster that will defeat everyone he sees in front of him. Derkori launches this talisman towards the flying group and uses telekinesis. She manipulates the talisman to go towards Brawly. And then the talisman hits Brawly's back and attaches to the Saiyan's body. At that moment, Brawly is seized by an aura of evil energy. He wakes up with his pupilless eyes with a completely uncontrolled expression. Surprising all of his teammates, Brawly lands a punch to the back of Goku's head, knocking out the Saiyan before he can even react. Goku falls from the sky towards one of the islands. Kale and Cauliflower, shocked by this, ask what Brawly did. At that moment, Universe 7 Saiyan turns to them. Looking at them with an expression full of fury, Kale and Cauliflower realize that Brawly was completely out of control, but wonder how that happened. While releasing a large amount of energy, Brawly flies towards the two Saiyans attacking them furiously. While watching this hidden on one of the islands, Derkori smiles with that most powerful Saiyan defeated. Brawly is sure to be defeating those girls very easily. Brawly attacks Kale and Cauliflower. He lands an attack on both of them, launching Cauliflower into the sea and Kale onto the island below them. The first to react is Cauliflower, who comes out of the sea already transformed into a Super Saiyan and attacks Brawly. The Saiyan girl lands many attacks, but the man receives all the blows completely still. Her attacks made no difference to him. After that, Brawly counterattacks with a blow that causes Cauliflower to spit out a large amount of blood. Seeing that that amount of power wouldn't be enough to deal with Brawly, Cauliflower immediately advanced to Super Saiyan 2. 
and then started a counterattack, but again her blows made no difference to Brawly, who after receiving many attacks from the front, grabbed Cauliflower by the neck and began to strangle the woman. Cauliflower, unable to escape the suffocation, began to lose her strength. But then Kale already transformed, and with her new muscular appearance, came flying and knocked Brawly away, causing him to release Cauliflower. After pushing Brawly away, Kale asks how Cauliflower is doing. Cauliflower replies that she is fine, but it is very frustrating to see the difference in power between them. Seeing Brawly flying towards them again, Kale says that she will try to face him head on and hold him. Meanwhile, Cauliflower must try to find a gap to attack. Kale flies towards Brawly and the two collide in the air, but Kale immediately loses the strength contest and is carried by the Universe 7 Saiyan, who charges at her with many attacks as the woman has to retreat trying to defend the blows. Kale recognizes that Brawly's power is far beyond her control and tries to talk to him, trying to wake him up from his furious sleep, but Kale's words don't seem to reach Brawly. While watching Kale trying to wake up Brawly, Dercori in thoughts say that that was absolutely impossible. The power of that talisman made Brawly's conscious fall into a deep abyss. No voice can reach him. At this moment, he is completely dominated by hatred and madness, making him come to his senses with words is not an option. Vegeta and Kaba are flying over a large open field. Kaba is passed out on Vegeta's back until he finally wakes up. Seeing that the younger Saiyan has woken up, Vegeta scolds him, ordering him to get off his back. Kaba, embarrassed, obeys, and then the two fly side by side. He asks Vegeta what happened. The older Saiyan explains that after the fight against the three women from Universe 2, he passed out. Kaba apologizes. He's causing his master a lot of trouble. Vegeta says it's true, but at least this time, he managed to win. He did very well in that fight and is certainly evolving. If he continues on this path, he will definitely become a worthy warrior. Kaba is a little embarrassed by that compliment and then thanks his master's words. Suddenly, the two feel something and stop flying. Vegeta with a worried expression says he is feeling Brawly's key and is completely out of control. But this time, his lack of control is much worse than when he faced Jiren. This time it seems that he is completely dominated by madness, without any trace of conscience or humanity. Kaba, sensing Kale and Cauliflower's key, realizes that they are having a hard time against Universe 7 Saiyan. Vegeta tries to sense Goku's key, as he had previously sensed Goku's key, next to Brawly's and knew they were together. But now he can no longer sense his rival's energy and wonders if Kakarot has been defeated. Kaba, very worried about his friend, says that they should help Kale and Cauliflower. Vegeta disagrees. They don't have to solve other people's problems all the time. If they are true Saiyan warriors, they have to face their own battles. But Kaba argues that this is not an individual competition. They are a team and need to help each other. After hearing that, Vegeta makes an angry expression. As Brawly pressures Kale, Cauliflower advances behind him. And then she notices Dercori's talisman attached to him and deduces that perhaps that is the cause of the man's madness. But when Cauliflower tries to get close to remove Dercori's talisman, Brawly notices her, grabs Kale by the ankle while parrying a kick from her, and spinning Kale uses her body to hit Cauliflower, throwing the Saiyan girl into the sea. After this, Brawly spins Kale over and over in the sky, creating a large tornado with the force that spins the woman. And just as Cauliflower was coming out of the sea to rush towards him and attempt some attack, Brawly launches Kale at her. Kale goes towards Cauliflower and collides violently with her. The two Saiyans are thrown into the sea with such force that they open a crater in the water to the deepest region of the sea until they collide with the ground and are buried. Only after the two women hit the ground does the sea close in again. That impact was strong enough to knock out Kale and Cauliflower, who are now passed out under the sea. Brawly, still not satisfied, creates a large globe of energy, and aiming to kill the two Saiyan girls, he launches his attack towards the sea. That attack would surely be powerful enough to kill them, and also destroy that entire region. But Vegeta appears with Kaba using the instant transmission, and seeing that giant energy globe approaching, he is scared. Brawly was really attacking to kill those girls? Vegeta immediately transforms into Super Saiyan Blue and fires a final flash at Brawly's energy. Vegeta's energy wave carries Brawly's energy globe into the sky. Vegeta has an angry expression. He didn't like to use the instant transmission, but Kaba insisted so much on helping those two girls that he had to do it. But in the end, it was necessary, as if they took a few more seconds. Brawly would have been a murderer. Vegeta tells Kaba to rescue the two girls at sea. In the meantime, he will deal with Brawly. Kaba obeys his master and dives into the sea to rescue Kale and Cauliflower. 
Looking at Brawly, Vegeta sees that he is not normal. In fact, just talking won't work. He needs to be defeated. The Prince of Saiyans increases his power even more. He will now use Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Brawly responds to the Prince of Saiyans' power increase by also increasing his power. He goes to Ikari form. From now on, he will use the power of an Uzaru. After transforming, they both fire several key balls towards each other. Many explosions occur in the sky, creating a large cloud of smoke. Brawly breaks through the cloud of smoke to attack Vegeta, but the Prince fires an energy attack that hits Brawly before he gets close. Brawly holds back Vegeta's energy, but the attack was incomplete. Vegeta moves behind Brawly and fires a second attack just like the first. As Brawly has both hands full holding the first attack, so the second attack hits him from behind and explodes, causing the first attack to explode as well. And then a gigantic explosion occurs. The pressure of the explosion caused a great tsunami in the sea below them. While looking at the big cloud of smoke waiting for Brawly to come out, Vegeta reflects that he saw a strange object on his back. Maybe that is making him go crazy. If he removes that thing, Brawly should be back to normal. The Saiyan comes out of the cloud of smoke absolutely enraged. He goes towards Vegeta trying many attacks, but Vegeta defends them all. The Prince finding some gaps during Brawly's attacks, counter-attacks leaving Brawly a little stunned. At one point, Vegeta launches a key ball at Brawly's face, causing a small explosion that leaves Brawly blind for a moment, after which he goes to Brawly's back and hits a kick on his back, launching Brawly towards the mountain of one of the surrounding islands. Brawly hits a rock with the front of his body and his face and the entire front of his body are buried in the rock. After that, Vegeta launches five energy rings at Brawly, trapping the Saiyan's arms, legs and neck. That way, Brawly was immobilized and his back exposed. After doing that, Vegeta smiles. Now all he needs to do is remove that weird thing on his back. But Derkori, seeing what was about to happen, thinks desperately. She says, Damn it, this way he'll regain consciousness. I can't let that happen. I will increase the power of the talisman so that his wrath will be fully unlocked. This can be dangerous, but if he is defeated, none of this will make sense. Derkori extends his hands towards Brawly. At this moment, the negative energy surrounding the Saiyan becomes even more intense. And then Brawly, in an even greater amount of fury, releases an immense amount of energy. With that, he destroys Vegeta's power rings, the rock he was trapped in, and also the whole little island. Vegeta, who was approaching him, is pushed away immediately. A large pillar of energy created by Brawly can be seen even outside of that planet. Derkori, seeing this, is very worried. Did she make him go too far? Kaba, who was carrying Kale and Cauliflower, leave the Saiyan girls passed out on the floor of an island. After doing so, he looks at a huge pillar of energy and is worried about his master. But the amount of power that Brawly was releasing was too great. He couldn't do anything to help. If he went there, it would just get in the way. The energy pillars crumble, and now Brawly can be seen again. He is transformed into a Super Saiyan, and his body is much bigger and more muscular. Seeing this, Vegeta gets very angry, and then he complains. Damn it, I was almost done. Now his power is much greater. This will get even more complicated. There is no way I can win this fight by containing my power. I will need to use my most powerful transformation. Vegeta starts to concentrate his power, and then the Super Saiyan Blue's blue aura changes color. Now the energy released by Vegeta is purple, the energy of destruction. The Prince of Saiyans, with a much wilder appearance, says with a crazed smile in his face. See that form, Brawly? I call it Ultra Ego. Which source of power is more powerful, the power of your fury or my power of destruction? Come, let's find out! Seeing that power emanating from Vegeta, Brawly gets even more furious, and then he advances towards the Prince of the Saiyans to attack him with a punch. And to Brawly's surprise, Vegeta doesn't dodge or block. He takes the attack head on. After being hit by the legendary Super Saiyan, Vegeta smiles, and then he says, Come on, Brawly. I know you can do better than that. Vegeta also lands a blow on Brawly, who counters, but is later countered by the smaller Saiyan. The two begin an intense exchange of blows, but neither tries to deflect or defend. They receive each other's attacks without hesitation. Before long, Brawly gains the upper hand, and he begins to land many attacks on Vegeta, who takes the hits of the larger Saiyan while spewing blood through his body. After many attacks from Brawly, Vegeta is completely dizzy and stunned. Brawly puts a lot of energy in his hand. He would finish the fight with one last blow, but when he did the attack, 
Vegeta held his punch with just one single hand, and then facing the legendary Saiyan with a maniacal-like smile, Vegeta says that now it's his turn. Vegeta lands a powerful punch on Brawly that causes the maddened Saiyan to expel a large amount of blood from his mouth. After that, the smaller Saiyan corners the larger Saiyan with a string of many hits, both fast and hard. Seeing the two combatants fighting in the sky from afar, Kaba is very impressed and he says to him, Impressive! Master Vegeta at one point was at a complete disadvantage, but even though he was hit by many of Brawly's attacks, he seemed to have gained the upper hand. It's as if the simple fact of getting beaten up makes him stronger. After thinking these things, Kaba smiles. There is a hope his master can win. Dercori, who was watching from another island, is not as happy as Kaba. She thinks confused. Damn it, what's going on? One moment that guy with the big forehead was losing, and suddenly he's got the upper hand? How can this happen? While making Brawly retreat with his attacks, Vegeta taunts him by saying, What's the matter, Brawly? Is this all your fury? Is that all your power? Your wrath is nothing compared to the true power of destruction. After receiving many attacks from Vegeta, Brawly finally held one of the blows and counterattacked the prince with a blow that knocked him away. After that, Brawly fired a large energy attack at Vegeta, who pointing one of his hands at the attack coming his way shouts, Hakai. After that, Brawly's attack completely disappears, surprising the legendary Saiyan, and Vegeta took advantage of Brawly's surprise to fly towards him and hit him with a strong headbutt to the head, stunning Brawly. After stunning the larger man, Vegeta grabbed him by the hair and then flew off carrying him towards the sea. Vegeta and Brawly immerse themselves in the water. The prince takes Brawly towards the bottom of the sea, and while doing so, he thinks, if I drown him until he completely loses oxygen and passes out, it will be easier to remove this thing from his back. But Brawly reacts and unleashes an immense amount of power that opens the sea and makes Vegeta release him. They start exchanging blows in the breach in the sea, and the pressure of their attack is so great that they create a tornado around them, and the wind mixed with the water creates a water tornado. Kaba and Dirkori try to see what's going on inside, but they can't see anything because of the water walls of that tornado. They can only hear the monstrous sounds of the impacts of their blows. Lightning falls from the sky and hits the water tornado, causing the spinning walls of water to be consumed by electricity. That was a natural catastrophe never seen by those who were present. Inside the tornado, Vegeta and Brawly exchange blows intensely. Both were badly injured. In a moment, Brawly grabbed Vegeta by the face and pressed his face against the wall of water, and the electricity running through that water electrocuted both Vegeta and himself. Even though he was electrocuted, Vegeta pointed one of his hands at Brawly's face and he yelled, Big Bang Attack! Outside of that gigantic electric water tornado, a huge explosion could be seen that broke up the tornado. The power of that explosion was so great that it left both Kaba and Durkori completely scared. From the midst of the explosion, two bodies were seen falling to opposite sides. One of the bodies landed on one island and the other body on another. Kaba and Durkori were very tense. Who was Vegeta and who was Brawly? Which one will get up? A short time later, they saw someone floating from the island's floor to the sky. That person was Vegeta who was very injured. Seeing that, Kaba was very happy. He did it! Vegeta defeated Brawly! Dakori seeing this dropped to his knees. Brawly lost! Was all her effort meaningless? But suddenly a large amount of energy started to be released from the other island, and then the other person could be seen floating towards the sky as well. It was Brawly, whose face was covered in blood, and now his expression was much more crazed. Seeing that, Dercori stood up again. She knew she made the right bet. Brawly will win. And at that moment, Kaba's smile fades. It wasn't this time. Seeing Brawly leaving that island emanating even more power, Vegeta is very angry. But then he smiles and says, You really are a tough guy. After that day we fought on Earth, I trained tirelessly to increase my power. And I also went through many life and death battles. I made my way to get stronger, though a lot of sweat and blood. But even though I've done all that, there you are, pushing me more and more to overcome my own limits. I have no choice. I need to evolve even more to defeat you. But just as Vegeta would start to increase his power even more, Goku appeared in front of him, telling him to stop. Vegeta is surprised by his rival's sudden reappearance, but says that this is not a good moment. They were in the middle of the fight. Goku says he's the one who has to fight Brawly, not Vegeta. The prince gets very angry with the statement from Goku, and he says, What right do you think you have to intervene in this fight, Kakarot? You were responsible for him. You were defeated. 
Now do you want to interrupt what I'm doing? Goku embarrassed apologizes to Vegeta. Unfortunately, he was caught off guard by an attack, but then he gets more serious again and explains why he stopped that fight. He says, Vegeta, this transformation of yours gives you more power at the cost of taking attacks from enemies. Brawly is very powerful and has the potential to greatly increase his power until he reaches some limit. This means that to fight at that same level as him and follow his evolution, you'll need to receive lots and lots of attacks, and he will probably keep evolving too, until someone finally reaches some limit. This means that no matter who wins, both will end this fight seriously injured. In other words, our team would be very harmed for the next stages of the tournament. Or worse, one of you could be killed. Hearing his rival's argument, Vegeta says, All right, Kakarot, you might be right. But what is your plan then? Goku explains, Contrary to your ability, my Ultra Instinct is perfect for dealing with Brawly, without resorting to extreme violence. Someone like him who evolves with the fury of battle must have big problems facing someone who fights with ease and with good dodges. I'm the ideal opponent to face Brawly right now. After hearing all this, Vegeta cannot think of arguments to refute his rival, so he is forced to agree. All right, Kakarot, your argument is irrefutable. But don't fail this time or else I will face Brawly with all my might and without holding back. Goku thanks Vegeta for understanding and says that this time he won't fail. Vegeta undergoes the Ultra Ego transformation returning to base form. He tells Goku about the strange object that was implanted in Brawly and that it was probably responsible for his sudden out of control mode. If Goku removes that thing from Brawly, he should go back to normal. Hearing Vegeta's instructions, Goku thanks him. That's exactly what he's going to try to do. After instructing his rival, Vegeta walks away from Goku. Goku closes his eyes and concentrates for a moment. And after doing so, he opens his eyes again and the Ultra Instinct is already activated. While facing Brawly who is completely enraged, Goku says, Brawly, maybe fighting me you can ignore all the anger in your heart a little bit. Ignoring Goku's words, Brawly charges at the protagonist, attempting to direct punch concentrating a large amount of power. But Goku, with a completely smooth movement, deflects Brawly's punch as if the angry warrior's attack slipped through his hand, leaving the pressure from Brawly's attack to pass right through him. After doing so now, with a much cruder move, Goku lands a powerful punch to Brawly's abdomen. A punch so strong that the impact wave of the blow passes through the legendary Saiyan's body. Even though he receives such a powerful attack, Brawly immediately recovered from the pain and tried a sequence of attacks on Goku who dodged all the blows with a completely serene expression. And after avoiding many attacks, the protagonist landed a second blow on Brawly, this time a blow to the face which left the brute Saiyan completely stunned. Brawly tries to grab Goku but the smaller Saiyan escapes the larger Saiyan's arms by doing an acrobatic move over him, then lands a top blow down that launches Brawly into the sea. A second later, Brawly emerges from the sea flying towards Goku trying to attack him in many ways. But Goku always dodges, which leaves Brawly completely frustrated. In a moment while evading Brawly's blows, Goku lands on an island, but the attacking Saiyan doesn't give any rest and flies after the protagonist to hit him a powerful blow from above. But Goku already expecting it disappears from Brawly's vision, letting him hit the island floor and completely destroying that floor. After Brawly does so, Goku reappears above him and using telekinetic force causes the various pieces of that destroyed ground to come together on Brawly, trapping the legendary Saiyan among the rubble. Seeing all this happen, Dirkori is very angry. Why can't Brawly hit the enemy? Maybe if he has more power. Perhaps he should try to push the talisman's power even further. Dirkori extends her hand, but when she was about to use her powers, someone grabs her arm. That person was hit. Seeing the Universe 6 assassin before her, Dirkori is very surprised. She asks how he knew she was there. Hit explains, Every time you made that threat to me before you escaped, I've been waiting for your next move. Feeling the monstrous energy off this Saiyan called Brawly's fights, I figured you might have something to do with it, so I decided to come looking for you. But now you will no longer interfere. Hit touches two fingers to Dakori's neck, and then she passes out. After doing so, the assassin thinks, Looks like he didn't get back to normal simply with her fainting. He'll still have to be stopped with violence. Sorry, Son Goku, but this is still in your hands. Brawly uses his power to completely blast the boulders around him, but his distraction with the boulders opens up a gap for Goku to come up with a moving attack that hits the legendary Saiyan with great force, sending Brawly far beyond that destroyed island. 
But even though he was sent far away with the force of Goku's attack, Brawly returned in just an instant, flying towards the other Saiyan with extraordinary speed. Goku dodges Brawly's attack, letting him pass right through. But Brawly immediately turns around and goes towards Goku again, as if he were a bull attacking the bullfighter. But this time he hits the opponent who needs to block the blow. Goku realizes that Brawly is already starting to adapt to Ultra Instinct. He needs to end this fight before it starts to get problematic. Brawly attacks Goku with many attacks, forcing the protagonist to block the blows while backing away. The fact that Goku is retreating gives Brawly more and more confidence. Now he's finally winning. His punches reach the opponent. But then, to the legendary Super Saiyan surprise, a large body of energy is created around Goku, and then the giant hands of that body hold him. After that happens, Goku smiles and then he says, Capturing you isn't that difficult as you attack like crazy with no worries. It would be hard to keep you captured, right? Well, but I won't give you time to get stronger. Let's get you back to normal. As Goku's energy body holds Brawly, the protagonist steps out of the energy and removes Dekori's talisman from the Saiyan's back. When Goku does this, Brawly immediately passes out. Goku sighs in relief as he returns to base form. At that moment, the energy body is dispersed and Brawly would fall. But Goku holds him and simply looking at his friend's face closely, he sees that he fell asleep as if he was overcome by a deep sleep. Goku smiles and says, Poor guy. I think he'll wake up in pain and very confused. Goku lands with Brawly on the same island where Kaba kept Kale and Cauliflower. Vegeta and Hit also join them. A few seconds later, Gohan, Piccolo and Frost arrive at the scene. They also felt Brawly's key getting out of control and that it was getting worse. And so they decided to go there to help. But luckily everything was already resolved. Now Team 4 is finally back together. Vegeta wants to separate from others again, but Gohan says he better not do that. They are already close to the center of the planet. There is no reason for them to separate again. What's more, other people were probably getting there as well, which means they're sure to encounter a lot of enemies from now on. Separation was definitely not a good idea. Piccolo agrees. They already tried the strategy and it didn't work. Half of them are already injured or have spent more energy than they should. From now on, it's best for them to stay together. Goku, Vegeta, and Hit, even not liking this idea very much, understand the arguments of the others and decide that doing this is really the best. After many difficult battles, Team 4 is finally reunited. 